My name is Jules Webster, and I'm the owner of the Art Supply Depot in Toledo, and most recently the Art Supply Depot in Bowling Green, two fine art supply stores that were started about six years ago in Toledo and a year ago in Bowling Green. And we have a whole lot of exquisite, hard to find art materials that most people usually have to buy online or travel to faraway cities to buy, but we supply it all here in our shop, so we're specialty fine art supply with a focus on intense customer service. I was told when I was growing up in art school that if you wanted to be an artist and you wanted to make a living, you had to be a teacher. That's what everybody said, and I didn't want to teach. I wanted to help engage the community. Um, so first I was told you can't make a living as a potter, so I started a professional pottery company and made a living as a potter for three years, and then kind of got tired of selling fine art to customers. And I noticed that there would be a market for selling art supplies to artists. So at that point, I opened the Art Supply Depot in Toledo. And I also think that I'm of the generation where we grew up and came of age at the time of the economic crisis. So we were always told, you can't do it, you can't do it, the economy's bad. But I think that there's an opportunity in a bad economy. So rents were low, morale was low, and people were looking for a new positive way forward. And so was I at that point in my life. So I opened the first Art Supply Depot being told that we couldn't make it, that the economy was bad. I did nothing but push forward, make that business a success. And then we realized that there was a great need in Bowling Green for a fine art supply store. As a lot of local bookstores are closing and they're taking their art supplies out of it as well, Bowling Green has a huge artist population and they were underserved. So the timing was right, the economy was right, I think. Market prices were low in real estate, so I moved forward. And I don't have a business degree, I actually have a fine arts degree. And I think artists are natural entrepreneurs. We take nothing, raw ingredients, and turn it into something. So I think that that actually laid the background for me to be a business person, because that's what artists do. We just turn nothing into something. If people don't want to know that um, you know it's hard to run a business. Everybody thinks it's really glamorous. But um, I knew there was a need for it. And I knew that I could do it. It would just take some time. So I uh, started my first business with one staff member on hand who helped me for four hours a week. And I thought that that was a whole lot of payroll. Four hours of labor was a huge deal. Uh, but just kind of grew the business slowly, listened to our customers, asked them what they wanted, what they couldn't find locally, what they had to buy on the internet, and then just slowly built the inventory, built the reputation. We do a ton of classes for artists of all ages and all skill levels, built our class and education programming just day by day, step by step, one piece at a time, and turned, um, I believe I started my pottery company with $1,500 worth of my cash on hand, and then grew that over the course of, I believe now, eight and a half years in business to two art supply stores. So day by day, step by step, slowly by slowly, just built it all up. So I was making and selling fine art pottery for a couple years, and that's a whole lot of work. So the time that I decided to open the art supply depot, I sold all the assets for the pottery company and rolled all that cash into the Art Supply Depot, and I remember being a young person and I took all the money I'd made selling pottery, a big pile of cash, and I took it to the bank and I handed it to the teller and I told her that I was opening a new store. And it's kind of fun, we still have the same banker, we still have the same teller, and she remembers that day that I came in and I told her I took everything I had and turned it into cash and then put it into a new account, which then became the Art Supply Depot. Actually, we were profitable our first six months. So we opened in July in both stores, and we were profitable the first six months. It wasn't much, but we've always been in the black, which is pretty amazing for a small business, especially an arts-related small business. People don't think that that can happen but it did, twice. The most gratifying part about owning these two businesses is the number of people that walk into our doors every day and sincerely say that I have changed their life or my staff has changed their life. Um, and people will cry. They tell us how much our classes and just our friendship and our advice means to them, but I can't, I can't put a number on it. Um, we get thank you cards in the mail, we get emails, but there are a lot of people that really look to art or maybe they don't at the time, they don't know that they're looking to art for a creative outlet or just for the next step in their life, just like opening the store was the next phase in my life. Art does change people's lives. Um, art empowers people, it's educational. If you can teach people that they can draw, that they can paint, that they can take these same raw materials that we sell and turn it into something beautiful, and you unleash their creative potential, potential they didn't even know that they had, it's very empowering for them and it really does make a significant impact in people's lives. A lot of people will just stop by on a certain day. They probably don't need anything, but they just love my staff. They love the environment. The supplies make them happy. There's so much color. There's so much positive energy in the store. People just stop by just because it makes them feel good.
The most challenging part, I would say, is probably just like any business owner, is just managing the inventory. In both stores, we have over 12,000 items, and we have the ability to custom order up to 90,000 things. And people's tastes change, you know, if any sort of retail and food and clothing and music, tastes change, and they change on a whim. So what could be trendy one day could not be trendy another day. So some days we need 25 of one specific thing, and then maybe we won't ever sell it again. So just keeping the inventory fresh, keeping people inspired. Artists and people in general want to be inspired, so we're always out looking for the next new thing. And I think that's the same for retailers everywhere. And I have an absolutely fantastic mentor that gave me some of the best of my advice of my life. And his advice was eliminate all other options. Whatever you want to do in your life, you just have to go for it full bore. If you have a dream, but you keep a side job, you keep your part-time job, you're never really gonna go for it. If you really want to do it, you have to give up every other source of income, put your back against the wall, and make yourself make it happen. If you hold on to any other piece of income, earning opportunity or potential, you're never really gonna give your dream the full, the full go. Save your money, save about two years worth of living expense if you can, or as much as you can, and then just quit your old job and go for it. We are everywhere. We're on Facebook, we are on Instagram, we have a website, artsupplydepot.com, that will direct to both stores. And if you also just Google Art Supplies Toledo, I bought that domain as well, uh, so we'll pop up.